Boom blast. So we just wrapped up sharing some stories about high school, including when one of our classmates got booed off stage at our graduation. We're not going to name names, but it's got us with the Wednesday sillies. I'm John Chidley Hill. <laughs> and I am Sheldon Alexander. And this is You Killed It, the podcast where we can't share all of our stories, but we share them with each other and that counts. The Lost Tapes. If we put out The Lost Tapes, oof, be a number one hit. Number one hit and our careers would be over. <laughs> also true. You know what I noticed too? That last week, for last week's episode, I cut like a shorter promo video that I never put out. Oh. <laughs> I just realized that. Like as I was saying that, I was like, wait a second. Did I ever post that video from episode two? <laughs> and it was like a 30 second, just like from the start of the podcast into like, uh, what's her name? Laughing. What's homegirl with the weird laugh? Uh, Bettina. Bettina. Yeah, like that's what the video was. And I kept, rem- and the funny thing is, I just remembered that as we were just having this conversation. And the weird thing was, I kept reminding myself over and over again because I kept forgetting. I cut it when I posted the video. And I was like, oh, I'll save that. I'll save that for more content for the next day. <laughs> then it was, oh, yeah, I forgot to post it. You know what? I'll post it for fresh content on the weekend. <laughs> then totally forgot. Then it was like, oh, we'll wait for challenge day. <laughs> I'm a tool. And here we are. Podcast Uh, started. We're just wasting time off the front end. Hey, everyone. How's it going? uh, You can still post it now or tomorrow morning. (laughs) It's It's true. 5 p.m. tomorrow. This is true. This is true. Maybe I will. I'll post it tonight. (laughs) Oh, man. What What a mess we are. What is going on? Oh, do you know what we should do off the front end? I should acknowledge the fact of the messages we got from people explaining to me how I messed up and I'm doing air quotes on the vampire dude. What's his name? Uh, Emmanuel. 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 Yes. So I got a couple messages here from people being like, and I'm scrolling back to find one of the first ones. Was it Sarah? Yes, Sarah, yeah. long time listener, Sarah. Shouts to Sarah. Sarah said, you did this man so dirty saying he called himself all these things when he was talking about Vlad the Impala, a Romanian st- and Romanian stereotypes. <laughs> well, I, I don't know if you saw Sheldon, but I defended myself. I, said oh, I, was, I see. I wasn't making fun of Romanians. I was making fun of vampires, which mm-hmm. I still think is fair game as they're a scourge. Especially, oh, I'm given to understand in the Pacific Northwest, where they have beef with werewolves and they fight over girls. We just, we can't have that, Sheldon. Vampires are totally fair game. First off, um, you know my rule in terms of TV shows that I mm-hmm. don't watch. I am not into shows that involve vampires, magic, or the forest. So, hey. Um, but someone else did write in the same thing, saying that your man, Emmanuel, was explaining that people know Romania because of Vlad the Impala. It was the start of vampire legends. He says, we're vampires in Romania. He's not claiming he specifically is one. Small, but meaningful difference. I will acknowledge that it is a difference, for sure. But if I were to say, I'm Sheldon Alexander, I'm from Canada, we play hockey. Would you assume that I like hockey or I like hockey tendencies? That would be a fair assumption. No, I'm just saying, I'm just saying if that's the way I started to describe it. And then someone wrote in and they're like, Hey, I think Sheldon really likes hockey. Would I be like, Oh no. Why would you think that? Yeah, it's true. I like the pause for dramatic effect. I <laughs> I'm just I'm just sticking by my anti-vampire stance. That's all. So hey, if I owe Emmanuel an apology for implying that or for mishearing and thinking that he called himself a vampire instead of referring to his people as being known for vampires, hey, I will apologize. Okay, that's fair. That's big of you. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. guess uh 
us and Canadians then, well, are very polite, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, <sighs> Emmanuel will just have to look himself in the mirror. Oh, wait, he can't because he's a vampire, Sheldon. <laughs> okay so let's let's get on with the episode because we're like off the rails we didn't even start really yet okay so no, okay we're brutal okay. tonight here we are here we are okay so uh devin devin is my question here is emmy for the so for the second week in a row devin gets picked right and for the second week in a row devin points to himself to a rookie who has to decide who they should partner with and they end up picking Devin. Why? I'm still why trying to figure they... this out. So I, why does haven't... Devin want to be selected and why are they picking Devin? We still don't have a full explanation, but I'm sticking with my theory that he's doing this so that he can be in a position to undermine rookies if necessary okay i also think as you ask this question i also think that what he's doing is he's making a point like if you're always switching partners you're going to know who their alliances are because they sort of have to tip their hand to you information so i think he knows that not only is he somewhat safe because of the veterans truce Mm -hmm. but also within the veterans he's not enemy number one true so i think he knows that he can hop around gather intel play rookies off of each other and i mean he knows that his greatest strength is his political game Mm -hmm. and if that's your strategy you have to have information so i think that's my guess because we don't really have any information as to why he keeps doing this. It was interesting to me that Emmy was asked directly why she picked him. And several of the guys wanted to know and were sort of surprised to see that he had been pointing to himself. Yeah. So I, think, I hope that comes out at some point. Or maybe someone will tell us they discussed it on the after show. But I want that to come out. Why Devin consistently wants to be picked. Or maybe we could get Devin onto You Killed It. Sure. That would work. That's also a possibility. That would work. I mean, I still want our fans to message Ashley and Amanda and get them to come on. Or maybe Michelle. Or, or did you ever think you'd hear me say Nellie T in the place to be? I don't know. You want Nelson on You Killed It. I don't, I don't know. I'm just saying, I'm just saying there's lots of options, lots of interesting conversations that could be had. That's all I'm saying. Speaking of Nelly T, Mm -hmm. we see Nelly T's boot camp. And before we talk about this montage, we've got to talk about the music because last episode of you killed it. Mm -hmm. We asked our listeners, specifically our American listeners Mm -hmm. to know to let us know if there's music, like real music, not like fill in music. Yeah. And our suspicions were correct. And I want to give a shout out. Hold on. Let me look it up on my phone. So while you're looking that up, though, I was confused when the scene started. That's what I was going to get to. Because I had closed captioning on. Do you watch with closed captioning on? No. So closed captioning well before the song started. Closed captioning came up and said Nicki Minaj Anaconda playing mm-hmm. and it didn't come on. Some other just random music was on at the very start of the scene. So I was like, okay, this is weird. Like, why did it say that? So I thought that maybe they just like redub it afterwards after the closed captioning is done or whatever. Right. But mm-hmm. then while the workout continued, then Anaconda actually came up and started playing. So I was mm-hmm. really confused. I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know if like maybe they just cleared that one song because it is kind of weird that we would only hear one actual song for a whole episode. Well, Caroline, a longtime listener, confirmed to us in messages that on last week's episode, <laughs> when 
uh, Tori was doing the flip, like the dance move on, I forget who she was doing it for. Was it Kells? Kells. It anyway, was Kells. Kells. That the, the song playing was Ludacris' Pimpin' All Over the World, <laughs> which, is, which is great. And I love Ludacris, and we could talk a lot about Ludacris. Almost, Lita! almost as much as I love 112. But really, yeah, he's up there. I'm a big Luda wow. fan. Wow. Okay. Luda was a moment in time. Luda had hits for sure. It was undeniable. It was pop music, but he was a really dope rapper at the same time. Like he had the formula, right? Like he knew the formula to make hit records. L- Luda's not a moment in time. Luda is forever. And I, mean, I will not, I will not take any other answers. Well, he's got a nice extension now in the Fast and the Furious franchise, for sure. But he's not, like, making music. Like, the last time Ludacris had a relevant song was what? Was what song? Well, actually, I'm so glad you brought that up. Oh, jeez. <laughs> because, as you know, as all true hip-hop heads know, okay, Dr. Dre doesn't write his own lyrics. Mm-hmm. And for a long time, Dr. Dre was working on an album called Detox, which has never come out and probably will never come out. But on that album, there was going to be a song that was going to be ghostwritten by Ludacris okay. called uh, OG's Theme. Okay. And okay. it got leaked somehow. And so it's Ludacris doing a Dr. Dre impression so that dr dre knows how to hit all the right inflections on all the rhymes and it is a a track (laughs) it's a reference track yeah you can find it on youtube it's really really good you will be impressed with Ludacris, both in his uh ability to like mimic dr dre without like sliding into mockery and like the lyrics are good and also uh ludicrous's cover of pajama llama is also a banger. Listen, Ludacris can rap. Like, I hope by this conversation, by no means is anyone taking this and me saying Ludacris can't rap. That's not what I'm saying at all. First off, Ludacris, was it the Major Look remix? Yeah. yeah. Incredible. Incredible. He has bars for days. That was not the point of what I was saying. I was saying more, he fit more into the, like, Nelly, you know, pop music, hip hop, and, like, had great videos. More so mm-hmm. than, you know, the street music, if you want to call it that, when guys were trying to do that in the late 90s, early 2000s. I'm cool. I'm hard. I'm tough. Nah, he was just making fun music. Yeah. On that same note, Anaconda, as far as I can tell, is the only actual song that we're going to get. So I bet you someone's going to tell us different. We should make this a running segment where people tell us what the music was that we missed. I mean, clearly, we just want this podcast to be actually a music podcast. <laughs> and we're just going to slowly backdoor our way into that. No, but I think the the, <laughs> the beauty of it is that we're bringing in like-minded people who like the challenge. And most of the people who like the challenge and who would listen to this pod, you're of a certain age because you've probably been watching the challenge for a long time. And so we don't really, we, we kind of talk of the music of our era. I think people like that. You might not like a full podcast about that, but the odd, you know, Luda every once in a while, never heard anybody. That's true. Um, I just wanted to go Luda one more time, (laughs) but I'll stop now. I'm sorry. (laughs) So (laughs) Coriel, the challenge, (laughs) Coriel and Gabo are talking about the the game as they work out and Gabo admits he doesn't understand the game <laughs> and it's adorable that he thinks he has to tell us that because, <laughs> I mean we've been paying half attention to what he's doing mm-hmm. and uh, what I found interesting though was that the rookies are so close to understanding what's happening to them but not enough so Corey L is telling Gabo that like you're more safe because you're with Nani, but it's clear that veterans are picking us off pair by pair. And as I, Corey L, am partnered with Michelle, another rookie, 
I feel like I have a target on my back. And then Michelle and Emmanuel, who are getting along, mm -hmm. uh, they're having sort of a sunbathing session together. I can only assume Emmanuel's wearing copious amounts of sunscreen because of vampirism. They're also talking about this issue. Yeah. And like, they're, they're, that's four rookies that are keenly aware of what's going on, but also shrugging their shoulders and being like, if only there was something we could do about this. Yeah. And like, because there's so many people still on the show, I never took the time to think about, wait a second, what are the numbers like? But later on in the episode, we'll get there, but they bring it up. They're like, it's 14 against 14. It's even. Yeah. <laughs> so like, what is happening here? Right? Like, you, it's so funny to me. You just like, they're so close. Um, I also, you know, it's been a while since we've done this, Sheldon. Mm -hmm. But from time to time, on you killed it. We give out real life advice. Okay. We, you know, we're a little bit older. We're closing in on 40. We've lived lives. And in confessional, Michelle says Emmanuel has some rough edges. Okay. He's a bit of an uncut gem. Mm -hmm. But if she polishes him, works on those rough edges, he could be a true gem. Okay. You younger people, regardless of gender or sexual orientation, please listen to me when I say you cannot polish the rough edges off of someone that you are interested in romantically. <laughs> it will not work. Uh, it, it has never worked. The only way funny. that someone like improves their rough edges is if they work on themselves. They have to want it. You can't change people. You're only going to hurt yourself. The flip side of that is... Your mentality needs to be, I'm going to accept this person and their rough edges. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Totally true. And also, there's no cure for vampirism. So <laughs> all Yo, these things. <laughs> like, I don't know if it's because of the vampire thing or if he never said that, would I still feel this way? My guy gives me weird vibes. And it might be the vampire stuff that I'm just never going to get over it. But like he still gives me weird vibes, so I don't know. It's weird. I, He's like, we <laughs> talk about game. Sometimes we kiss. Sometimes we snuggle. We cuddle. I'm like, all right, man. Cool, man. Cool. Stories. I'll say. I'll say this. I can see. Like he's a handsome guy. I'm not into tattoos in particular. I'm not into face tattoos. But like he has a good face. Okay. But he has a bad salad. Like that's a bad haircut. Yeah, but that's like a, that. We're too old for that. That's like a yeah. young generation thing going on right now. There's Damn a thread. There's a thread that I'm not gonna read because it's too long. Even though it would be like if we didn't spend most of this pod off the rails. Already, Talking about '90s rap. Go yeah, on. Yeah, I would definitely read this whole thread, but instead <laughs> I will tell people to go to Twitter and just look for this thread, because uh, it was based off of if people see what's going on right now del curry and sonia curry the parents of stephen curry are getting a divorce and so there was this huge log ass thread that this dude started and the whole purpose of it was basically because as the story goes now we're kind of learning that we think or tmz and such are reporting that they think that it's because she was cheating on del and he found out but obviously the assumption remains that, you know, obviously Dell did something to mess this up. So the whole thread basically was just like, buddy, let me tell you something. You don't want to be out here in these streets, right? Now. <laughs> Go back and fix your happy home. That's basically the whole thread, right? <laughs> it's so good. It's so good, but it's way too long. And I don't want to get into it, even though I just basically have, but go find that thread. Because it just leads into this whole thing about it's the kids, man. There's certain things that the kids are out here doing that we just got to let slide and, and let them know that that's their thing. Because as one of the threads, one of the things I'll read this one just because it was perfect. 
he's basically saying, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm trying to prepare you. These people are children of Rihanna, born with the fires of chaos. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's a generation of kids growing up in the Rihanna era. And hey, that's not a knock on Rihanna, right? Rihanna's a boss, but there's certain things that come along with that. Go, show, go find that thread. It's amazing. What we then move on to is CK <laughs> Recon. You know, I want people to write it and tell us how random this episode is. <laughs> but anyways, yes, this this challenge was amazing. No, this no. was an all time great challenge. Mm-hmm. Did I just say challenge twice in the same sentence? No, I, I'm good. not. I'm not coping, Sheldon. Uh, CK Recon. So you and your partner have to jump off of a 30-foot cliff into what TJ describes as this violent sea, which is not reassuring. Not at all. You have to dive down and retrieve a bomb, air quotes bomb, and then swim deep into this cave, get another bomb, swim out with your partner, and like the current is super bad. Like It's very strong. They, you and your partner swim out to a wave rider, hang on to the back. It takes you a certain distance, and then after a marker, you swim to shore, place the bomb, it's a race. Fastest team wins it. How's your guy Huey do at this? Your man's Huey? I mean, Huey was... He was on one. And the way that it started, I was like, this guy's being super extra. Like he comes up and he's scared and Ashley's trying to tell him Ashley, who I normally think is a really good partner in this instance, she wasn't being too reassuring, but I think, I think there's a reason why I think she knew that he was faking and he's kind of just like, you know, going over the top and he wasn't really that scared. He vomited. He was yeah, so scared. But like, yeah, but I don't know if I'm buying all that. I, I feel like he was kind of like acting. There's a lot of weird. It was just strange to me. I'm calling this out because there's no way there's no possible way that you were that shook ones. And then two seconds later, you're like Michael Phelps swimming through these rough waters like it's nothing. How you're just afraid to jump in. Like that afraid, bro? I don't know. Not buying it. And and the way that Ashley was was reacting, a couple things. Telling him, oh, it's light work. Kids do this for fun. Like that's not really, like that can't be her actual motivational speech <laughs> to someone who's afraid to jump off. Then she's just laughing at him. Then after he throws up, she kisses him on the lips. <laughs> trying to be like, all right, let's go. I was like, hold on a second. What's happening right now? Yeah, I mean, they have an interesting dynamic. How about that? Hold on. We just talked about lessons to kids, okay? Listen. Is your lesson going to be don't kiss someone on the lips after they've thrown up? Yes. That is 1,000% going to be my lesson. Like, what? Like, what, what are we doing here? I, I don't understand. I don't Sheldon, understand. you don't want to know how many times I've thrown up and then made oh, out with someone. <laughs> kids just say no okay just say no <laughs> on the on the note of having children and saying no ashley says i feel like i have a child i never wanted and also i want to beat this child <laughs> which <laughs> was an early contender for my line of the episode yeah but it's also when you when you take notes and you write these things down sheldon mm-hmm. it makes you think about them more mm-hmm And it's such a horrible thing to say. (laughs) Like, it made me laugh. And then as I wrote it out, I was like, damn, that's fucked up. (laughs) It was messed up, but it's Ashley. Ashley is one of a kind. And if Ashley is nothing else, she is sheer entertainment, right? You can love Ashley. You can hate Ashley, but you're going to feel something about Ashley because she is constant entertainment. And I love her for it on this challenge show. It's great. Yes, I do love Ashley. I so, just have a I have a comment about this competition in general, Sheldon. Okay. Shouldn't they be wearing helmets? Like they wear oh, helmets yeah. for like doing puzzles. And yet, like, people are getting hurt, like Michelle, who 
explodes her nose somehow. We don't even see how. I'm not saying that a helmet would have saved her, but like it's a the current's really strong. They're in a cave. They're jumping from 30 feet into the water. It seems like it would be prudent. I was worried for Tacho when she jumped in and then she was immediately shook and tried to just jump on Jeremiah. And he's like, get off me. You're, you're drowning me, <laughs> which was hilarious. But then her instinct was to go towards the rocks. And I was like, no, that's not a good idea. You don't want waves coming up and like hitting you from behind and knocking you into the rocks. Like that seemed even way more dangerous, but I don't know. This was, a, uh, this challenge looked really, really hard. I think speaking of hard, I think we have to talk about CT and Tommy. Yeah, totally. So at first, as they get on the wave runner. Hold on. Though, wave hold, on though, hold on. Though, hold on. Though. Should we spend more time talking about Michelle? Because I just think what she did was like pretty badass. No? Oh, yeah. Like, no, it was impressive. She was killing it at the same time, like pardon the pun. I didn't mean to do that, but she actually was beast mode in this challenge. She comes up, she's bleeding. Everyone can see that she's bleeding, but in that moment, cause you're in the water and the water's rushing. I don't know if she noticed that she was bleeding, but she just dummied everyone else completely dominated, was unfazed by the whole thing. And I was like, okay, all right. And then as we go to Tommy, I mean, as you were going to say, I'll let you continue. I'll let you continue. Well, I was going to say, so at first, as his wave runner pulls away, CT and Berna's wave runner pulls away, CT's trunks start to fall off. So his ass is hanging out. I was like, "Ah." like classic CT, you're on enough seasons of the challenge. These things happen. Hilarious. Yeah. And then I, I realized this happening to Tommy too. And then I was like, oh shit, Tommy's dick is all the way out. And like he fully lost his trunks. Like they are somewhere being made into a bird's nest in Croatia right now. And that's the thing I didn't re- like. How did that even happen? When did that happen? How did that happen? And then you realize once he gets to the shore. And I was kind of surprised at how they edited this together. Because they show everyone like laughing and laughing and laughing and laughing because, hey, it really did look funny. But then when he gets to the shore, you actually see that uh, I don't think this is funny. Like my guy is out of it. He has no idea what's going on. He is out. The medics come. They're trying to wake him up. They finally wake him up. And he's and he's like, oh, I don't even remember the end of that challenge. Like what happened? Like he said to Big T, sorry. Sorry, that's my fault. And she's like, what are you talking about? You finished. Like He didn't even remember what happened. And so and then he realizes that he's naked. He's like, can I get can someone get me some pants? Yeah. And And at that moment. Yeah. At that moment, I'm like, yo, this guy's concussed. Like at that moment, I said that. So I found it kind of weird that they they allowed the edit to like make it a joke. When clearly my guy's seriously hurt, but again, maybe I'm just, you know, too into the NFL or sports where concussions have obviously become such a hot button issue and like such a serious issue. And this is still a challenge, right? Do you think he was concussed or do you think it was like sunstroke or heat stroke? I think he was concussed for sure. That, that makes sense. Which again, brings me back to my point. Why aren't they wearing helmets? Well, yeah. No, you're um, totally right. And like, all that being said, I think my line of the episode is Corey saying, I've seen more of a redhead than I ever want to see in my life. Immediately followed by Huey saying, not only is it a show, it's also dinner. That one-two combination had me dying laughing. It's pretty. In bad. my defense... Those lines were before he started puking and we knew that things were messed up. In no, my no, no. And again, like I'm saying that I found it kind of weird after that 
he then had to leave because the concussion was so bad because yeah. I thought it was like, oh, okay, he probably has a concussion, but they're not really going to talk about it because it's a challenge. And you don't want to like glorify my guy getting a concussion in something that like that's you're watching and thinking, how safe is this? Do you know what I mean? But whatever. At the end of the day, you give the man credit for finishing. Yeah. And I mean, it is kind of scary when you hear him say he didn't remember finishing it, but crazy performance either way. Crazy challenge. That's one of the rare challenges. We talk about this a lot on this pod where you have some challenges that they don't translate well on TV in terms of it's, it's probably a lot harder than it appears. This challenge looked really hard on TV. And then I probably assume that it was even harder. I, th- I think it was harder than it appeared. I don't think like, I think I'm a, an above average swimmer. I think I'd have a hard time with this. Yeah. I think you would get so tired so fast. Like there's some good swimmers in this group and everyone's getting pushed back with that current as they're trying to get out of the cave. Like it, yeah, it looked really hard. Uh, and I'm impressed that basically everyone got through it. We can't say that everyone got through it unscathed. Mm-hmm. As you already said, you know, just to fast forward a little bit, Tommy has like is no longer medically clear to compete because of his what we believe is a concussion. And well, I he will said say, he had a concussion. Oh, did he? I yeah, that. like when he came back in the house and said he was leaving, they're like, oh, I, had a, I got a concussion. Um, I just want to say, it was hard to see Big T so upset that Tommy was hurt and leaving. And it really emphasized for me, if Big T likes someone, I like them. Like the Big T stamp of approval is a I real like thing. That. I like that. But we skipped over an important thing, which is Ed and Tori win. Mm-hmm. They beat out uh, Coriel and Michelle which by is just huge. like a second. Just devastating for Coriel and Michelle. And who, you heard Michelle say, I was right behind them. And could I have pushed a little further to like, you know, get a better time? So you feel bad for her. You definitely do. Yeah, absolutely. And if you think about it, like, let's just say Coriel and Michelle win. Those two of all the rookies seem most keenly aware of what the situation is. If they win and they can, like, eliminate, like, they could have been in a position to really shake up the veteran truce. And it's just sand between their fingers. Totally agree. They can't do it. We then have an interesting conversation because Tori has the power. She is having a game talk with Devin and Anissa and the way things were set up, it's clear that like the three of them were like, it didn't come up incidentally. Like this is definitely a meeting Mm -hmm. to discuss what to do. Yep. And Tori says, Hey, big T put me and Anissa in against each other last time. Now is my chance to like get some revenge. And Devin breaks down the house and like who their targets are should be so effectively. What did you think of this scene? <laughs> I'm obviously Devin's biggest fan. I know. Yeah. I, know. I mean, I thought it was very interesting because Devin's breakdown was very, as you said, right? Devin's breakdown is really good. And the thing to me about Devin is how measured he was how calm and cool he was, I'll say, because I thought that made a lot of sense. And he said, because I don't get the whole big T versus Tory thing because I get where Tory's coming from in theory, but in reality, are you worried about big T? No. Do you know what I mean? Like, should you be worried about big T? I don't think so. So I just find the whole thing to be kind of like a, a dumb move. And I agree with Devin. Devin says, forget about big T the house won't vote for them anyway. So there's no point in that Corey and Michelle, they might win and then come back and be really mad, which is also true. And he said, Berna and, and Emmanuel. And I think it was smart because 
he used it to benefit their own game as well. Talking mm-hmm. about how Nelson is blinded right now, and that could cause him to end this vet truce early because if given the choice, we know he'd try to save Burna. And I mean, that was later proven on later on, but that to me was the most correct thing that was said by uh, Devin. Got to get Nelson's head back in the game. Yeah. And it's so interesting because, like, I don't think of Devin and Nelson as the tightest. Like, I think they get along. Mm-hmm. But Devin, surely, of anyone in the house, is closest with Kyle. And then probably CT, Tori, and Anissa. But, like, the fact that Devin is thinking so big picture, where he's like, no, we got to keep the veteran alliance together. Yeah, and yeah. this is the scene you alluded to it earlier. This is the scene where Tori's like, "I've done the math. It's fourteen and 14. and okay, so it's tied between the rookies and the veterans in terms of numbers at this point. So this is when you have to press the advantage rather than like even the numbers out, <laughs> like give the advantage back to the rookies. Like mm-hmm. it's also it's also just too big a game move, too early. Doing like, too much, picking off rookies. Definitely, definitely doing too much. And um, right when you think she's do. Sorry, were you going to continue there? Oh, well, I was just going to say. No, you finish your thought, and then I'll say something. No, I was going to move on. I was going to say she was doing too much, and then Tori continued to do too much <laughs> by then <laughs> going to Tasha and Jeremiah and asking them, like, who would you guys rather go against? And I and I was so confused by that because it's just like, wait. What is the purpose of you doing this? So I thought that was a good move. Okay. Except that she didn't follow through on what she promised Tasha. Yeah. So like she later makes this case to Big T where she says that, um, one of the reasons why she's sort of going after Big T, Tori's going after Big T, is because it's clean. Because everyone knows that they already have a, an issue. By going after Big T, she's not making any new enemies. Mm-hmm. Which makes sense. Yeah. By approaching Tasha and Jeremiah and being like, who do you want? Then at least she has the excuse instead of like it takes the heat off Big T and like she can still stay relatively clean by saying they asked for whoever. I just think it's doing too much. All of it was doing too much. But yeah, maybe Tori also is just doing this for TV because I I don't see how it makes any sense that you would take this chance to get out Big T this early. And the fact that, you know. I don't think Big T handled the the uh, deliberation that well at all. No. She, I, she, uh, sorry, go ahead. I want to talk more about the, the deliberation because interesting things are happening in that deliberation. No, I just didn't think that she handled herself well. And she didn't know whether, like Josh was trying to tell her, hey, you should probably say something. And she's like, no, I'm going to blow up if I do. So I'm not saying anything. It's like, that doesn't even make sense. Like, that's such a dumb plan, right? Yes, it is a dumb plan. And then she ends up speaking out anyway. But and what's twisting so- her and leading Tori right into the slam dunk. I of, know. <laughs> of, oh, yeah. What do you do when people are really close with each other? Big T, you put them against each other, huh? So <laughs> the deliberation starts with Tori congratulating everyone on completing and more or less surviving mm-hmm. a very difficult competition and then like as everyone's applauding Ashley basically like cuts them off and is like fuck that who's going up and unbelievably Tasha sort of volunteers herself and then Jeremiah reluctantly is like uh I guess we should go in yeah and then Devin he's done this two episodes running and it's actually so brilliant and how simple it is. Mm-hmm. He asks, 
if not you, then who should we vote for? Which is such a powerful question. So because if, if they say nothing, then they're fucked. If they say something, it's also creating trouble. And it's actually not an unfair question. So no one's getting mad at Devin and saying like, oh, Devin, keep stirring it up. Because it is, it is a fair question. But it's, it's such it's a fair game question to ask. It's a great chess move. But it's such a good chess move. It just, there's no good answer. Nope, like there's not at all. Nothing you can say that is like the proper solution. And yeah. it keeps the feet totally off Devin. And Tasha falls for it because she suggests Michelle and Coriel. Mm -hmm. So essentially as suggesting that the veterans get what they want and pissing off two people she should be forming an alliance with. It's just masterful by Devin. It is a great chess move because as you said, there's no right answer. And if you say nothing, you're definitely going in. And if you say someone else's name, well, now you're now calling someone else out who's probably another rookie and now everyone's going at you right now. The rookies are mad and there's a splinter. If you say a vet, well then that vet's going at you because it's like, Oh, you guys are trying to like come at us. So you can't win. You definitely can't mm -hmm. win. So then Devin, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, so no, 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 go, go ahead. You continue. You continue. So then Devin points out that it could just be a female elimination because Big T is by herself. Tommy's out. Mm -hmm. This is where Josh leans over to Big T and is like, hey, you should probably say something right now. Yeah. She says, oh, I can't. Uh, I'll go nuts. And then she goes nuts anyway. Mm -hmm. And as you already said, it blows up in her face because Tori's able to just like make her look super bad. Yeah. But I think Tori looks super bad because you already have Casey bringing up like Casey says in her confessional. Why would Tori even bring this up? You're going to make certain people think that you're already thinking about turning on the vet alliance, which is not a good look. Then on top of that, then you have a conversation letting Kyle know that you're in the same way already thinking about it as well. And he had to kind of convince her and Kyle did it in a way where he kind of let her play it out because he just said, well, you know, you're kind of opening the door for the end of the vet alliance then. And she was like, really, you think that he's like, well, you know, once you do it, everyone else is going to justify doing it, which is obviously so true. And I, I'm baffled at the concept that Tori never thought of that before. Come on, man. It seems so obvious that like, the veteran truce so far is working, but they also all know correctly that mm -hmm. all it takes is the littlest thing and they're after each other. Like there's already obvious cracks. There's big T there's Nelson and Ashley have some friction. Mm -hmm. There's obviously Josh is a very combustible element. Like there's, there's like there's Nelson and Fessy. Yeah. Like there's so many little things. All it takes is a little booze, and someone to get in their feelings and we're off to the races. So like Kyle and Devin are doing their best to hold this together. And I'm just surprised that it's so hard for Tori to see that. Like if she casts that first stone, that it's going to be game on doing too much, man, She's doing mm -hmm. too much. Um, so as we move on from that, you also get now that there's a push for, uh, Berna to put Berna in, which he knew was going to come at some point, right? Because obviously the Ashley drama from last week is still going to linger and be a thing. And also she's been doing well in some of the challenges and they see her like working out every day. So you can tell that she's a pretty good competitor. So that makes sense, right? Um, we talked about the conversation with Tori and Tasha and Jeremiah and then not listening to them, right? So mm -hmm. we go into the elimination and I need you to answer a question for me that I don't understand why. So we've already discussed the fact that, you know, it's about getting the rookies out. Cool. But why do they keep putting in Coriel? Like there are other rookies. 
I have to say, I don't know. I, I truly don't understand wh why they're so fixed on Coriel. Because, I mean, I guess he's a threat. Like, he did well, I mm -hmm. think. Yeah. Uh, in the one elimination. He's... Um, it's also like it, it's sort of keeping things clean That's that you're not, you're yeah. not pissing someone else off. Mm -hmm. But I don't understand why not a Manuel. And this isn't because he's a vampire. I'm not even bringing <laughs> that up. But I thought that, um, I thought that earlier Devin made good points about Emmanuel being arguably the most dangerous of the rookies. Mm -hmm. So why not just get rid of him? Like why why keep picking on Corey? I don't quite get it. But yeah, I mean maybe they thought Corey would have the better chance at taking out Jeremiah, who's also obviously a huge competitor. Mm -hmm. Um so I don't know, maybe that's it, but who knows? It's strange, but either way, it's Berna and Coriel going down. And then guess what? Devin was right mm -hmm. because Tommy went home already. It's only going to be a female elimination, which means it's Berna versus Tatcha. And this elimination round was very tough. Very tough. You have a bunch of different polls that are all different lengths. And you have to put them up on and basically build a ladder and climb up to the top and ring a bell. Sounds simple. But again, the distance between the posts that you have to put the poles on is different as you go higher up and the length of the poles are different. So there's obviously a strategy to this on top of it being really difficult. And this elimination looked like it took forever and it was super hard. Like, I feel like a lot of people would have struggled at this because it looked really, really hard. Yeah, this, I think, was really hard, as you said. I mean, Berna's a trained acrobat, and she's having trouble with this. Mm -hmm. It would be mentally taxing because you have to organize the polls and be really strategic. You'd have to stay really focused and calm which would be tough because like I'm sure you noticed those poles were bending. They, there was no like hook to keep them in place. So they kept falling off. Berna took one off the nose and had like a pretty serious gash. This would be miserable. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. And of course the interesting drama that's playing out is that you have CT who's Berna's partner and you have Nelson who wants to be Berna's partner in another sense, yep. giving her advice, and you have Ashley giving Tasha advice. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Kyle Kyle was my line of the episode, right? Kyle, in this ear, Nelson's yelling, Berna, I love you! And in the other ear, you hear Ashley yelling, come on, Tasha, fuck Nelson! <laughs> <laughs> um, so... Obviously, like that's a great dynamic, which of course we're lucky to get in this. Um, and eventually, after a while, Berna ends up pulling it out and she figures it out finally, climbs to the top. Got to give Tasha credit because she put in work and like had a chance to win. She kept it close. She had a really good showing. And there were moments where I was like, oh, wow, is she going to pull this off? Because that would have been an yeah. upset beating. Absolutely an acrobat, right? Or like a trained yeah. circus person. What is it? Acrobat? Is that the acrobat, correct? Yeah. Okay, cool. Just, I just want to make sure I'm not being insensitive or, or mean towards the, the circus um, community community. Yes. Thank you, John. Thank you. See, you're the smart one. I struggle for words all the time because I'm not that smart, but point being um, the real, the real, ish was going down at the end because Tasha was happy for Berna, right? And was telling her, hey, go back in the house, go win it. 
but make sure you don't fuck with Tori. She's fake. Don't trust Tori. And I was like, ah, like I had the bench reacts. I had the full on bench reacts on my couch. And uh, the other challenger seemed to be very excited. And I love what Tatcha did because Tori kept trying to be like, what, what do you mean? And she's like, nope, nope. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. And Tori kept trying to jump in and interject. She's like, nope, stop, stop. I don't want to hear it. Just stop now. And I thought that was really, really funny. And all Tatcha said was, I'm not the one that came to your room. Remember that. And I thought that was just the perfect mic drop. And what was Tori going to really say to that? There's nothing to be said. Nothing. I got to say, I always love it when people burn their bridge on the way out. It's always burn their bridge. Did you really just do that? I did. I was just clarify. I was clarifying something didn't happen with the airwaves and like, you know, the feed like cut out a little and, you know, there's a glitch maybe just making sure, just making sure. Okay. Yeah, no, I did that. Uh, But in all sincerity, I like it. I didn't Uh, just say it for the pun. I love it when this happens Okay. because I, because it's such a good, like you're on your way out, such a good opportunity to actually absolutely destroy someone else's game. Yeah. Cause there's, there's, you can say whatever. There's no, there's no repercussions. Yeah. No, totally. And it's even better when you're spitting hot fire facts. Yeah. Yeah. This was a great episode, Sheldon. Because you're also blowing up Tori's game on the way out. Right? Because yeah. the vets are going to be even more looking at Tori and being like, wait a second, what is she doing? Because you have to remember, there's two games going on. Right? Yes, the vets are getting out all of the rookies. But let's not play around as if they're not also making the checklist in terms of who's at the bottom of the vet alliance, right? Who's going to be the first ones to go in the vet alliance. That's also going on as well. And Tori is not doing herself any favors. She is not. And to that end, I will give big T some credit here. Mm -hmm. Big T said earlier when she was talking about how, you know, she feels like she's on the outs with the vets She made the good point that, yes, she's in the veterans truce, but she knows she's not top dog. Mm -hmm. She knows she's at the bottom of that batting order, which is the sort of thinking that Amber M, sorry, Amber B should have realized last season with the Big Brother Alliance. Obviously, it worked out for Amber, and I don't want to take away from her win, but Amber misplayed that, and I'm glad to see that Big T is aware of what's going on. Yeah. And I think it's going to be interesting to see if Big T can rally the rookie troops. Because I bet Big T might be one of the first people to flip. Yeah. No, I'm also true. curious to see what Nelson thinks about Berna being put in. That Nelson line where he's like, come come to daddy or daddy's waiting for you in bed. That, I was like, yo, chill. That dude. was the creepiest shit ever. It's very creepy. Very creepy. Uh, Anytime I'm saying you're more creepy than the dude I only until recently thought was a vampire. Yeah. It's a level of creepy there, Nelson. Super creepy. Uh, We've already said our lines of the episode. So I have to ask you, Sheldon, who killed it for you this week? Um, Who killed it for me this week? I'm going to go a little bit off the board. Um, I'm going to go a little bit off the board here. And I'm going to say Michelle. And the reason I'm going to say Michelle is because I thought that, you know, you look at how other people finished, right? Like Tommy obviously, you know, was concussed and didn't know what was going on. Michelle, who knows what level of injury she was, but bloodied face throughout the whole thing still almost wins. But also, as the rookies who have been on the block consistently, somehow the one thing I want to give her the most credit for that's under the radar is how she handled the deliberation. Mm -hmm. Because remember, Coriel's getting mad and Coriel just stops. He's like, all right, I'll let Michelle talk. And Michelle could have been combative. But instead, she was like, no, Tasha, don't worry. I understand exactly what's going on. I understand why you would say that. I get it. 
I understand you had to say someone's name and that's a very difficult position for you to be in. So I understand why you, you said our name. It's okay. And I was like, hold on. Did this girl figure out the game already? Like she just deflected it, deaded it. Just like, don't even worry about it. Unfazed. And I thought that was really big. So you add that to her performance in the actual daily challenge and they almost won. So it's not like I'm just picking someone randomly. They lost by a second. So yeah, I'm going with Michelle because of the rookies, she seems to be, uh, have the game the most figured out. Yeah. Being completely unbothered is always a power position. For sure. For sure. Unaffected. Unaffected. I'm also going to go a little bit off the board. I'm going with Devin. Okay. Not a great, not a bad physical performance by him, but man, what a clinic in this episode on how to play your position. Mm -hmm. His political game, at least for this episode, he's not always making the smartest decisions, but this episode is what we're judging him on. Yeah. And he was on point. He was bringing very correct analysis to Tori. And it seems like she listened in terms of nominating Berna. Yeah. And we'll, again, we'll see what Nelson, how Nelson reacts, but Nelson doesn't seem mad that Berna was nominated. Not yet. He just, yeah. not yet. He just <laughs> seems horny. But, <laughs> but excellent analysis uh... by Devin. And again, we already praised him in deliberation. Like Devin is running the deliberation show and mm. people don't even realize it. Yeah. Like he is just, he, I, I don't want to say he's single-handedly tearing the rookies apart, but the work Devin does in deliberation is a big part of how they're being dismantled. You're full on Devin man crush is showing right now. That's fine. I'm comfortable with who I am. It's showing as much as Tommy's dick. I'm just so like, wow. The way Devin is <laughs> tearing them apart, but not getting his hands dirty mm -hmm. is really the heavy lifting. Like think about it every week in deliberation, Devin either asks that devastating question of if not you, then who, but he also like cleaned up Josh and Fessy's messy play. Yeah. Last week. I, I mean, you mentioned this though, and you mentioned how long is this gonna last? This uh happy go lucky vet alliance. It looks like next week it might be done. So we're in for a big episode. I can't wait for it. I gotta tell you, I am enjoying this season. This was a really good episode. This was a good episode, and there was no club scene, there was no like hooking up or whatever. This was just a uh, a straight on just challenge and, and politics like actual politics and maneuvering and gameplay. I like it. Tori doing too much people calling her out for it. I like it. Where can the good people find you on social media? You can find me on Twitter at shell Alexander on Instagram, Sheldon Alexander. Same thing goes for YouTube. Like, and subscribe. That's where you can watch this video. If you're ever looking for a challenge video, we got that on the YouTube page. Um, yeah, like and subscribe. Actually, we might have another announcement coming soon, which like I can't fully say because it's not finalized, even though it might be finalized by the time you watch this. But stay tuned to the, the Twitter feeds for more that could be coming soon. I'm intrigued, folks. I don't even know what Sheldon's talking about. <laughs> oh, so this is, oh. <laughs> so this well. is exciting for me, too. Uh, and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at J. Chidley Hill. Let me say that again, because I just went through puberty. <laughs> you can get me on Twitter and Instagram at J. Chidley Hill. I'm leaving that in, say, by the way. Yeah, no, I, absolutely. I have to say, I'm always impressed because I've never like explained how to spell Chidley Hill. And it's not that it's like the most complicated name to spell, mm -hmm. but it's, it's not a common name. It's not Alexander. It's not, Alex, I didn't want to call you at all. And your basic ass name, yeah. but. Sheldon Christopher Alexander. Have we, you know my full name, right? Have we talked about this? I don't think so. Okay, my full name. I'm so excited to watch your face as I say this. 
is John Hector McMurdo Chidley Hill the third. What? That's not real. That's not real. Yeah. That's incredible. I'm not going to put my uh, driver's license up on screen, but I will. I will send you proof. That is. I'll send send you a photo of my passport. That is incredible. Actually incredible. You learn something every day. It's amazing. That's it. If nothing else, that's what you killed it is about. Is education. (laughs) What a random ass episode. <laughs> Until next week, this was <laughs> You Killed It. You killed it.